Hello and welcome back to another episode of Cosplay Tips. This is episode 3. I know it's been a while since I put one out, but I'm still considering this and calling this season 1. Today I'm going to be going over my own personal experience and level of knowledge with dealing with plastics and basically toy guns and, and, and toy knives and, and things like that that are mold injected plastic. Uh, and that can be anything from a simple toy to something like this Fortnite shotgun from Nerf. And generally, the rule of thumb and the thing I've come to find is that the higher quality of the brand and the plastic, the easier things like paint adheres to it. I've never had good luck with spray paint. I don't care what it is. Uh, I always use Duplicolor uh, vinyl and fabric dye and it's it just absorbs right into the plastic however the cheaper plastic that you get say for example if you get something like uh, the most bargain shelf cheap flimsy junk thing no paint I've come to find really sticks to it but a higher quality nice hard plastic like this if it's sanded and handled properly, uh, the Duplicolor is a great primer for that. And that's what I'm going to go over today. And part of what prompted this, and like I say, I wanted to do this a long time ago, but was not able to just due to my work schedule, was that I had seen pictures on Instagram, in particular, uh, Philly Reeking Cosplay, had painted a water gun with spray paint. It looked awesome. It was for his uh, Punisher cosplay and he caught it with his fingernail and it tore the paint right off and that happens a lot of times on plastics with spray paint uh, even if you've sanded it first it still tends a lot of times to come off or if it's enamel especially I found places like where my hand will rub on the grip for example it will it will come off now this here is not only for my cosplay, it also doubles as an actual functional Nerf blaster. And if any part of this looks familiar, that is because this started off as this. This blaster here is the actual core and center of this. I just built onto it. I'm not going into anything that complicated in this video. I just wanted to show you this. What I do in the video is very simple, but it's a springboard to building something much larger, particularly if you want something like for cable and you don't want to spend a ton of money on a replica, don't have it, don't want to, whatever the reason is, you can take a bunch of these toys, rip them apart, put them back together. Another example of this would be the, I believe, M1 Pulse Rifle from the movie Aliens, directed by James Cameron. Uh, I mean, who doesn't want to do a Ripley cosplay? That's awesome. And I've seen multiple videos where they've made them, but just chopping up and screwing things together and hot gluing things together doesn't look as good as, you know, filling in and sanding and prepping everything. So that's the, the basic concept I want to go over in this video. The real master of integrations and uh, just making some amazing looking Nerf uh, blasters mostly for well pretty much all for competitive uses but you could see and use your imagination how this could be applied to your own cosplay build and your own particular uh, prop and I'm gonna link mr. Nathan's channel down in the description and if this video interests you and you want to see something more advanced that's the person to watch. I can't do a video on that because he's already done an entire series that's way better than anything I could do. And I've learned a lot from that. So I will link that below. And today what we're going to do is I'm going to take a toy pistol that was thrifted and given to me a while ago by my buddy Mark. Shout out to you, Mark. And once again, time didn't have time to do anything with it, but I held on to it. And it was damaged. And I'm going to repair it. And we're going to sand it and fill it and paint it and get it convention safe and I know this is a long intro and I've already been talking for a while but since I mentioned convention safe let's talk about general safety and convention safety whenever it comes to any sort of prop now <clears throat> your own local convention and your own local uh, county city or state laws vary so you need to investigate that first and if you have a convention coming up and whenever you're on there to purchase tickets or look at your tickets or just Go to the website 
and look up the rules and guidelines for cosplayers. That almost always has a section on props and prop weapons. And my own individual conventions differ. For example, at one convention, I could take this as it is. Okay? It is a functional Nerf blaster. It still works. There would be no darts in it, of course. It would just be carried as a prop. But I could take this. Now, say to a different convention, I could not. Unless I did things like removed the, the trigger and the internals, which I could do with this because it is uh, able to be fully unscrewed and disassembled. I could take it apart, remove the internals, and take it as an empty shell. Now, <laughs> since I have four or five different conventions in the immediate area every year, there's yet another set of rules for another one of them that says if it looks anywhere near realistic, which I think this doesn't, but also kind of does, it has to be painted a bright color. Now, I'm obviously not going to repaint this, so this thing in its entirety would be out. And basically, in short, their rules are if it looks realistic, paint it a bright color, a single color like orange or pink or yellow or neon green or neon blue or something like that, but just one really out there color. And if it is... <laughs> well, first of all, no airsoft. That's totally... <laughs> almost every single one of them now do not allow any sort of airsoft, whether it's assembled and works or it's disassembled and you remove parts from it so it's non-functional. They don't care. You, you can't take that. But <laughs> if it's a Nerf gun, then it must be painted bright colors and it must not be working. So just this one convention is super strict. Now for all the rest of them, they're, 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 they're pretty straightforward. They want it to be non-working, so no trigger, you know, nothing, something that, especially if, you know, a lot, uh, if, if I was to paint this to look realistic and, you know, it's, it's still pretty goofy looking, right? But once you disable it, you know it's completely safe. And if there's no trigger, then you can't make anything go bang, bang. The other thing is orange tips. Orange tips are, are a necessity. Not just for your conventions, but for your general safety as well. Uh, an armed security guard or armed police officer or uh, armed citizen may see you with a weapon that looks, or sorry, a prop that looks realistically like a weapon, and then they will get confused. And then may cause an incident where you may get hurt. So always make sure that you have orange tips. Never point your prop weapons at anybody. I don't care if it's a working airsoft or it's an unworking. Just don't point it at anybody. It can freak people out. Uh, unless it's like a photographer. He says, point it directly. Okay, that's different. But don't go around pointing them at people. That's obvious. But that's another thing that could, you know, cause somebody to be alarmed, uh, especially an armed security officer of some sort or a police officer who is already on edge because... They're, you know, they've got a lot of people around them and a heavy responsibility and a lot of stuff going on. So they're already on edge from that and they're already on high alert. And you start doing stuff like that, don't do that. And if you ever would be approached, comply with whatever they say. You know, if they say drop it, throw it on the ground, you don't want to scratch your prop, scratch the prop, throw it on the ground. Just do what they say. <laughs> that, that, I shouldn't have to say that. That should just be common sense. But comply with whatever they say. Don't go, hey, this isn't real. Because then that's how you get shot. So, yeah. But aside from that, that's, you know, my, my little spiel on safety. Follow your, your, your local laws. And if you're not familiar with them, look them up. Uh, go to the convention website. Not just any, but the, the specific one that you're going to. Check out those guidelines before you head into anything. And without me yammering on anymore, let's just go ahead and get all this started now. All right, so the first thing that I've done is take all the screws out and remove the batteries, which are just going to go in the trash. Uh, I may save some of this stuff because who knows, I may use a speaker or something later, I don't know. But all this is coming out, and the reason for that is at the conventions I go to, they don't allow you to have uh, too, many, too realistic looking of a prop. So they, they prefer that you remove things like hammers, triggers, so that they can see that it is non-functional. 
uh, and not so much just for you know the convention organizers or the people around you, but for the security, so they don't mistake what you have for a weapon. So I'm going to cut these wires and remove the switch and the trigger and all this stuff by taking out this Phillips screw here. And depending on what type of toy pistol you may have, you may not have any electronics to remove. But this one, I do. Pops a tension spring off. Bam. Pop the trigger. Da -da -da. Now, they sell these at Walmart, but I didn't get that there. This was thrifted. So there is a hole in it. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to go through and patch that. And just like everything else, I'm going to keep it as inexpensive and easy to access as possible. So I have a lot of various junk things like this laying around that are a little beat up and the ones that I can't salvage or don't have any use for I end up parting them out to fix things like this and the only reason that I didn't go purchase a new one because these are relatively cheap and just do that straight from the get-go is I'm hoping this will give you some ideas of what you could do this is a very basic simple thing here just to fix a hole but you could use this to add things to your pistol to make it look different. You could make a flashlight attachment, which I believe I probably am going to do, and add it to this up front because it does have sort of a fake rail here where you would put an actual like laser sight or flashlight attachment. But this, this is just all very basic. And what I've done is I cut a piece of scrap plastic that I had laying uh, in my junk bin and I glued it in place and to do that I just used some regular old liquid super glue nothing special uh, did not use the gel or anything like that I don't much care for that I just use regular super glue I also if it's foam I like to use the gorilla super glue but for plastics I never use that either just the regular old super glue and now that that's glued in place I'm gonna heat up my hot glue gun and fill the back in here a little bit because you'll notice there's a little gap and some dead space just due to the curvature and shape of everything and I just couldn't you know get the plastic in there securely with cutting it any smaller get it any closer so I'm gonna have to fill that in with some hot glue okay so As you can see here, I've already applied baking soda down into that space. And since I filled the back with hot glue, the baking soda isn't going to come out now. And if you have epoxy putty or something, you can do this as well. You don't have to do it, go with this method, but this is a cheap, uh, everyday household method to get this done. And I'm going to take my super glue. And just put some of that on there. Let the super glue level out as much as possible. Okay. Push some of the excess back in with my finger. Okay. Now that's done, I'm going to take more baking soda and drop that on all that super glue that I just put in there. I'm going to let that sit for about 15-20 minutes and I'm going to come knock off the excess into my trash can. Alright, now that I have repeated this process several times, uh, you can see it's built up pretty good. And it's not perfectly level or even, but it's there if that makes sense. You know, it's starting to get there. And to get it the rest of the way there, now I'm going to have to sand it back down to match up with the rest of the actual shell here and to get it all nice and smooth. However, before I do start the sanding, I am, of course, going to take and replace all of my screws so that I have a nice, stable object to work with. So I decided to take it a step further and I filled in the screw holes as well with super glue and baking soda and this gap here that was just kind of weird 
filled that in and a little filling on this other little gap. And next I'm going to, like I said, do the sanding. And for that, the things you definitely need is like sandpaper or sanding sponge or both. Uh, this is actually skateboard grip tape that was extra. I pulled it on itself. Now this stuff, if you if you have some laying around you decide to use it to sand with, keep in mind it's less like sandpaper and more like a file. And files are really useful because if you haven't done this before, you may be thinking that the super glue and baking soda isn't going to be that hard. And in all actuality, it's generally harder than the plastic. So I only really use the files if, say, the super glue that I put in there lumped up a lot. This does not. I should be able to get this down just by sanding it. And shouldn't have to file anything, really, because I actually did pretty good on this. But sometimes I just get it, it there will just be a lump or a bump. And trying to sand that down, even with this, will take hours. It's easier just to start off with this, get it at least level and down a bit, and then sand it the rest of the way level with the plastic. But first thing I'm actually going to use, and this isn't necessary, but it just speeds up the process, is a Dremel 4000 rotary tool with a sanding head. Alright, dremeling is done, and it's not perfect, but you can see that it is much more flush. Like I said, I don't want to sand it down to the point that I'm sanding the plastic. I'll do that by hand, but I want to get it as close as possible, and if possible, get as much of this edge squared off by sanding it, and try to make it look like I didn't patch this stuff. But yeah, first I will start off on rough or thicker areas, like I say, with my roughest sandpaper, and then I will move down to... A 300 grit and then eventually a 600 and I'm gonna sand the whole entire shell except for this front tip I'm gonna leave it orange and mask it off for safety purposes but yeah so far it's not looking too bad Okay, and the reason that I sanded the whole entire thing all over, uh, anywhere that's shiny, like kind of right in there, I'm going to need to get in there with the sandpaper, but as long as it's dull, it should be good enough to absorb the paint. And the particular type of paint I'm going to use is Duplicolor Specialty Coating. Flexible finish, ideal for dashboards, door panels, seats, and carpet. It's for vinyl and fabric. You can pick this up at AutoZone, but I will put a link uh, in the description to this. And I'll also, like I say, try to put a link to this as well, provided Walmart. I'm pretty sure they're still selling it. But the difference between this is this is a more of a dye, not a spray paint. And this is the difference. And this is the stuff I've seen on Instagram a lot, where they will post photos of the toys they bought and painted, whether it's a squirt gun, a Nerf blaster, or a toy pistol, whatever. And they scratch it with their fingernail and it takes the spray paint right off and that's pretty true even if you get spray paint that is intended for plastics it's usually not really for the mold injected plastic 
This stuff is more of a dye, and it tends to absorb into the plastic more and is much harder to get off, whether that's through wear and tear of handling or through wear and tear of dropping it or scratching it, or even if you try to sand it to repaint it, that sandpaper, once you start rubbing on those layers of spray paint that you put onto it, it's going to build up on your, on, on your sandpaper really quick, but it will come off the blaster much quicker and easier, in my opinion, than this stuff does. And that's why I use this, and I learned this from the Nerf modding community. That was not from anything else. And here's the other issue with spray painting. All of the texture and detail that is in this from the mold injection process, the more spray paint you gob up onto stuff, the less you're going to see that detail. It's going to become muddled, and it's going to look ugly. And, yeah, we don't want that. So, that's why I'm using this stuff as the primer. Okay, I went ahead and blew the dust off of it with my air compressor after wiping it down with a cloth. Then I masked off the tip and hung it so that I can go ahead and apply my Duplicolor Vinyl and Fabric Specialty Coating. Okay, so I have put several coats on here and allowed it to dry for 24 hours, and now I've come back and masked it, which was a challenge, but got it. So just the slide is exposed. I'm going to paint that entire area black using my airbrush. You don't have to use an airbrush. You could use spray paint or paint it by hand if you're good at that, or you could just get more Duplicolor. They sell it in flat black and gloss black, but for the sake of this, I'm just going to go ahead and use my airbrush. All right, now that the black had dried, I took and masked around the barrel. And you'll notice I have painted it metallic and a little thicker, kind of towards the center here and towards the front, where I figured the slide would hit and cause more wear. Not sure how well that's going to show up on camera, but that's what I did. And also used it, sprayed lightly in areas where I think it would also show wear. And for that I used some Createx Wicked Colors, Wicked Silver. And I thinned this out quite a bit and very slowly and gradually apply it. Uh, that way I don't put too much on so it doesn't look too gaudy, but I don't put too little with too much of the black showing through. Okay, now I have masked off the grip area, and just like before, I have some black loaded up in my airbrush. Same Createx opaque black that I used for the slide area, and I'm going to go ahead and airbrush this up. Okay, and for just some final touches, I took some acrylic gold craft paint and dry brushed in the little stamps on both sides. And I also took some acrylic silver just to put some weathering on the screws and a little weathering on some of the actual quote unquote moving parts. Of course, there are no moving parts because this is all static, but, and a little wear and tear on the ends too. And now that that's all done, I'm going to use some crystal clear enamel to seal all this in. This is pretty important <laughs> because the fact is, like I've already stated, no matter what you use to paint your plastic guns, eventually it will wear off just from hand contact. But putting on a layer or two of enamel, any sort of clear coat, is really going to help it. Honestly, if I wanted to be super obsessive, what I'd probably do is do the bottom in a flat and do the top in a gloss but this is what I have so I'm just not going to obsess over it be picky and just do the whole thing like this okay so the clear coat has had plenty of time to dry and 
and yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way that this came out. Of course, it's not perfect, and I'm not perfect, but if you look up here where I filled that screw hole when you look at it closely you can see it but overall that's a pretty good patch job for being done with two simple and expensive household items super glue and baking soda now as I said for larger uh, larger things where you're integrating say like I did with this 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 large piece with this I end up using a lot of steel reinforced epoxy and epoxy sculpt so that's getting into stuff that costs a little more, and the epoxy sculpt, I haven't actually seen in a store. I usually have to order that online, so that's that. But, yeah. Now, just to recap, and I'm also going to show you one that didn't go well. Now, I purchased a spray paint that was intended for plastics. And this was one of the very first ones that I had ever painted. And I spent the extra money for the spray paint, and I followed the instructions, which was a coat every 48 hours. I gave this three or four coats, and that's what the paint ultimately did. The first coat, after I came back and looked at it, it didn't quite bond to the plastic, and I got these little spaces in between that when I put on the further coats down the line, just look like cracks all over the entire thing. You can see them here and here. That's just the paint. That's not actual cracks in the plastic. So I was kind of bummed about that. And this is kind of what started my search for something that would not wear off. And this hasn't really been used in any sort of like functional capacity. Like yes it is a nerf blaster. It does still work. But I wouldn't use it in a nerf war. It's giant. It holds six shots which is stupid or something this big. It's like a pistol, but not. And it's bolt action, which I hate. But just to show you, even with those three layers of paint, you can still see here where it's worn off. And you can see here on the trigger, and here on the grip, and right here, and if I just scratch it a little, it start taking more of it off very, very quickly. So that's my example of what spray paint even spray paint has been marketed and sold to bond with plastics that's what it does or at least that's what it did for me maybe you'll have different results I don't know in contrast I want to show you this one here which has had a lot of heavy use which is where I'm firing it very rapidly and very quickly and just to show you here this is where you cock the actual blaster right now, for firing this thing at least five, six hundred times, which is much heavier use than just picking something up like this one that had the spray paint. Where's the wear? There's the wear. You can see right there some of the original blue shell is starting to wear through. But mind you, that's after hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of heavy uses on this. Okay? That's it being dropped, nicked, dinged. I've got some white paint from another blaster that's scraped off onto this here, just from them being laid on one another. But it didn't actually take the gray off. And on the grip area over here, of course I'm holding it, it has a lot going on. And you'll notice, same thing. There's no wear. It's still the same color despite all that. Now, I'm not saying you'll have these exact same results every time, but I've done this on several dozen blasters for myself and at least another dozen that I've sold or given away as gifts. So, yeah. And, like, for example, this here is a new one. It's called the Agitator. And I think this one will probably pretty be pretty popular for cosplay uses it has a lot of deco on the shell and if you wanted something that looked more sleek and took out some of this goofy stuff you could fill this in pretty simply with your super glue and baking soda or epoxy sculpt or anything and sand and smooth that out and you'll have more of a rifle-esque looking thing to paint like I say it's got a lot of cool stuff going on but it's a bit much you know what I mean like actual tactical stuff doesn't have this kind of goofy stuff going on so if you wanted to paint this and turn into something you know more cosplay oriented gut it take all the 
working stuff out of it just so it looks cool. Only, uh, yeah, there's always a way to either sand down some of this or fill it in. And real quick, you know, as I've mentioned before, this is about the cheapest type of plastic I would try to paint like this. And this here is a super soaker, scatter blast, doesn't matter what it is or what it's called. But the point is, there's a difference between this type of mold injected plastic. This type of plastic is very much like any other toy gun or nerf blaster. But you move over into this plastic, and this is what I was talking about with cheaper plastics before, or squirt gun style plastics. It's a lot softer. In fact, maybe it'll show up on camera if I, yeah, you can see I can scratch it with my fingernail. Okay, I can't do that to this. And this is the stuff that absorbs that duplicolor the best. When you get into the softer stuff, even when you sand it, and for one thing, sanding it ends up being a lot more ripped up than this, which is harder. Obviously, softer, harder. So, painting stuff like this is always harder. And that was my whole thing, you know, with the mentioning the squirt gun paints in the beginning and people getting upset and because the paint comes off. But even if you sand it, it's hard to get anything, even the duple color, to stick to plastic like this. But it still does stick better to this because this is a high quality plastic versus the junkiest, cheapest, you know, Dollar Tree plastic you're going to find. Okay, so that's pretty much going to wrap that up. Uh, thank you for coming along on this journey in the last couple days of painting up this toy that I had. Hopefully it gave you some ideas on you know, your own projects and helped you out and inspired you. And as always, I really appreciate uh, every one of you who watches. And I want to wish you a great day.